Amy, have you seen my magnetic clutter catcher? No. Amy, where's my seam ripper? Gail, I don't know. Where's my tape measure? I'll find it. Where's the store phone? It's on the charger, like always, I think. Do you know where my wallet is? I have to pay for something. I told you to keep it with your keys. I don't know where my keys are. In your hidey hole. Ah! This is Gail from Bernina of Naperville. And is losing things a part of your everyday routine? Not anymore, because this month's Fat Quarter Club, we are making a super cute, cave flowery, super sexy tool belt. And it can hold your tools, it can hold your wallet, it can hold your flip phone, it can hold your magnetic grabber, all of those things. And the best part is, this is a free pattern from spoonflower.com. Now we've made, as we always do, we can't just make something straight up. We've made a few minor adjustments, but you're gonna find those instructions in the handout that's associated in the description of this video. We also put the handouts up on our fat quarter of the month page. So no worries, you'll be able to get it one way or the other. So what we're gonna do first is just go through all of the things that you need to make this super cute thing, and then we're gonna stitch it up. Now there's minimum sewing skills required for this, but one of the things that I would like to point out to you is you are gonna want a quarter inch foot, you're gonna want an open toe foot, and you're gonna want an edge stitch foot. Now, that for those of you that are very Bernina-fied, that's gonna be a 37, 97, 37D, 97D for your patchworking, or it's gonna be a 20, a 20C or a 20D for your open toe sewing. And then finally, for that edge stitching, it's gonna be a number 10, a number 10C or a number 10D. And of course, D means dual feed. We're also gonna be using needle positions because for my top stitching, I like to move my needle over just a little bit. So you're gonna see how to do that. And then also we're gonna use a bar tack to reinforce the pockets of this super cute project. So let's get started. Now for our supplies this month, we have a selection of six CAFE facet fabric florals and coordinates. And you know, it's one of those things like with his fabrics, you can just randomly pick six and they're all gonna go together and look really cool. Uh, we do have some other materials. We're gonna be using three CAFE buttons. Yes, I said that right. We now have CAFE facet buttons at the store that coordinate really nicely with the fabrics that we have. You're gonna also wanna pick up two yards of one and a half inch wide webbing. We're using the Tula Pink webbing and that pink and orange stripe is just perfect with this tool belt. And three yards, about three yards of fusible woven or two yards of the 21 inch SF-101. I pick up the OESD fusible woven by the roll. So, you know, however you have it, we just need to reinforce some of these fabrics with some extra oomph because we are gonna be putting some of our sharper objects like scissors and other things like that in this bag. And then we're gonna want thread to match the fabrics. Now, I you're gonna see in the video here, I'm probably gonna have to change out thread colors. I did white a little bit when I just stitched some of the stuff together. And then I'm using purple for most of it. But when I stitched on that webbing, I did change out to a pink thread to match the, the webbing part. And then finally, two one and a half inch D-rings. So let's talk about the cutting. Now, I mentioned the Spoonflower blog pattern that is available as a link in these instructions that are in the description of the video and on our website. But we are gonna be cutting per the instructions that they give us in that project. And they make references to four main tool belt pieces, two large pocket pieces, two small pocket pieces, two divider pockets, then a center pocket base, and then a center pocket. So all of those things are going to need to have that SF-101 on the back. I did cut all of the pieces for my tool belt from the fabric first, then I cut the fusible woven separately and then ironed them onto the back. One thing that I want you to really give yourself the freedom to do is pick 
whatever fabric you want to go wherever on this pocket tool belt. I also don't want you to think too much about which fabrics go together with whatever fabrics. And I don't want you to have to think you have to make your pockets totally on the same side and everything that I did. You can have the freedom to do whatever, and you may even decide that you don't want dividers on your pockets or you want more dividers, depending on what you wanna put in this handy little apron style tool belt. There's one thing that we cut in addition to the spoon flower pattern, and that was this little strip that we need to sew our buttons onto, and we're gonna use that to clip a chatelaine that I made from a free project on Bernina.com. This was uh, something that we made out of cave. We embroidered it, it holds scissors, some other things, and it's just kind of laid around the shop without a home. So we decided that it would be really cute to put something on this belt where we could clip that little thing too. So if you're interested in that project, I have a link to it on the handout that's available in the description of this video. So probably the funnest part about this project is all the pressing that you get to do. And um, it starts with using a really handy tool called a hot hammer. It's made by Clover and they also make a hot ruler and a hot square. The hot, all of these little hot ruler type things could be used, but I keep my hot hammer handy to my iron and I'm gonna crank up the steam on my Laura Star. So there are all of the pockets we have to do a little bit of pressing on, but for the two large pockets and the center pocket, for the sides, you're gonna press those over half an inch. Then on the top of the pocket, you're gonna press over half an inch and then another half an inch. So that's kind of double folded there. And there are times when, you know, pressing something like this with that fusible woven on the back and everything, it can be a little bit stubborn. So in order to get this to lay flat and be easy to manage, I use my heavy clapper. I can't recommend these things enough. These clappers are great when you put that hot steam into the folded edge and then you leave that clapper into place to just kind of sit there and let that fabric cool off. It will leave a nice crease and a really um, easy thing for you to stitch. And then when you sew this, going over to your machine, the reason why I'm using that edge stitch foot number 10 is because it's got that little middle guide on it and I can line it right up to that folded edge, move my needle position over a couple clicks and just easily press these hems on these pockets down in place neatly and very professionally. And then there are these pocket divider pieces in the small pocket. You're gonna make these very similarly, except on the sides of those, you're gonna press those over three quarters of an inch on each side and then press that top of the pocket over a half an inch and then another half an inch and stitch with that edge stitch foot in exactly the same way. So this is the process in the, um, that differs a little bit from the spoon flower instructions is that I did not press my bottoms up at this point. I left them unpressed up and the raw edge just there untreated for right now. You don't have to worry about it. So now that you've got your pocket tops done, it's time to do these top stitching lines to hold the pockets onto our large pocket. So you take the large pocket, the small pocket, and the pocket, divider pocket, or whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna do one where I can fit a lot of stuff in there and another one that I'm gonna divide. But with these, we're just gonna simply concentrate on doing the center pieces. So those edges over there on the right and left, we're only going to bar tack those. We're going to sew the top stitching down on those when we put it onto our base. But I'm using my guide, my edge stitch foot, and I'm lining it right down the middle of those pockets. But then I'm going to make sure that my needle position is still moved over so I can stitch these guys down with this perfect little top stitching seam. And also, I'm just going to go down this one side. This is the left side of the pocket divider piece. And then once I get to the end here, I'm going to stop and I'm going to pivot. Do a few stitches to catch this other pocket next to it because these guys are butted right up next to each other. 
and then I'm gonna come back down the other way, sewing the right side of this small pocket. And then I'll secure my stitches at the end with a back tack. And then now I just wanna switch my foot to my number 20 open toe foot in order to make this bar tack that's gonna reinforce my edges. So I'm gonna do a bar tack on both sides of the pocket tops. And this bar tack is really just like a little reinforcement stitch. You might see these on jeans or something like that. Anywhere you need to reinforce something so that if it gets pulled a lot, it's not gonna fall apart. Now you have two of these pockets to make. And one of them, I opted not to do divided pockets, but on the second one, I did divided pockets and I just took that piece and divided it into thirds. It's about an inch and an eighth away from each line. And I used the uh, water-soluble marking pen or a heat vanishing pen, whichever you prefer. And still with my open toe foot, I just followed those lines to make the pocket. And once again, after I made the lines, I did use the bar tack to reinforce the tops of these pockets. And then I do that there. And once the pocket is together and the flaps are tacked down, I'm going to layer this onto my base. So before we do any work here, let's just inspect how our bases are made. So these are pretty easy. You're gonna take two of these 10 inch squares and they are layered right side together. And you can see when I picked out my fat quarters, I didn't even make them the same. I, I wanted to make them fun. And you're gonna layer them and just simply sew with a quarter of an inch and your quarter inch foot around three sides, pivoting at each corner. And then you're gonna take your other set Layer that right sides together, but mark two inches from the top and with a three inch gap. And that's gonna be a opening that's gonna be left for your hammer or your scissor holster. And I'm reinforcing those openings so they don't pull open when I turn this inside out. And just like any piece like this, after you stitch, you're gonna clip your corners and then you're going to turn it inside out. with And use a poking device to poke those little corners out. I can use my talons, but um, I also like the expert point and press tool from OESD. And then we're gonna give these a good pressing. And there's our opening for our holster. Once they've been pressed, you're gonna take that pocket unit and don't forget you're gonna make two, one with a hammer strap and one without. This is our one without. And we can stitch those side pieces down now but you're gonna place this on there a half an inch up and you're gonna have that opening of this piece at the top. And when you place it just like that, after we sew the sides, we can stitch up that bottom to kind of bind that base of the pocket. For the other pocket, the one that has the little hammer strap, we are going to make the hammer strap with that skinnier piece that we cut quarter of an inch, and we're gonna turn this inside out. And I use my tube turner from Sue Overy Pruitt, and it's super easy from Sookie Sews to just turn that little baby. Now, in the instructions, the um, spoon fire instructions have you put that seam in the middle, but I put my seam towards the top. It, it doesn't really matter. So just press it flat and fold it in half and insert it into that little opening before you do your top stitching of your pockets on this unit. And don't forget about the center pocket. It's a smaller version of the pocket unit that we just made, but it's going together in the same fashion. I divided the pocket into quadrants just so I could have space for like USB sticks, chapstick, things like that. In preparation to attach the pocket units to the tool belt strap, the webbing, you're going to do a little stay stitch along the top of the large pockets. You don't need to do this to the center pocket because it was essentially stitched all around and turned inside out, but let's do our stay stitching first. 
Then what we want to do is find the center of the webbing and you can either mark it with a pen, you can mark it with your water soluble pen, whatever, and then find the center of that center pocket. So I tuck that little center pocket under that webbing and it's probably overlapping about three eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to stitch it and I'm going to stop and take the pocket, the large pocket that I want to be on my left side and tuck that in with that folded piece folded towards my pocket. I pressed it over on that little stay stitch line. And then we're gonna stitch that down. When we get to the end of that pocket, we're gonna pivot, stitch a few stitches, and then come back down using the um, side of my foot kind of lined up with my previous stitching. I'm just doing a little U-turn there. And then I come back, stitch through the center pocket, and then attach the pocket that's gonna be on my right side. And with this process, this is gonna hold those pockets onto the belt. And you can see here that I did take the time to match the thread. So I have pink thread in my machine to match the pink spot on this webbing. And now all that's left is to attach the D-rings. And I just used a basic box with a little X in it to attach these. And then on the other side, I'm just gonna burn it with a lighter to melt that webbing so it doesn't unravel. And then voila, it goes around the waist and now I'm never gonna lose anything ever again, right? <laughs> but wait, remember those little straps that we made? Well, we folded those in thirds skinny wise and gave them a good pressing, put them against each other so we can take our kafe buttons and attach this little strap so that it can hold our little chatelaine. Now, when I put these together, I put the straps folded pieces towards each other and just did a simple honeycomb stitch. You could pick whatever stitch you wanted. And on the ends, I tucked them under. That might be the most difficult part of this process there. Okay, now we're gonna finish the seam. And this honeycomb stitch really doesn't require any back stitching or anything like that. And you know, you can fiddle with those edges, but those buttons are gonna cover them anyway. So let's go back to the machine and stitch the buttons on to attach this little strip. And I folded the strip in half and then placed it right on the edge of my tool belt on the right side of the tool belt. And then I'm gonna put, I think I'll put this black and white one right in the middle there. Now, wait a minute there is a better foot for this project than that number 20D that you see there. I'm gonna put on the number 18. And the number 18 foot is a button sew on foot. And I have actually taken off that little tongue in the middle of the foot. So I removed the little tongue so that I can just sew these buttons on a little bit tightly. And then to get the buttons to stick, you could use scotch tape or something to hold them down, but I'm using this rescue tape that's three quarters of an inch wide. And I really, you really rub those pieces onto the surface and then you can peel that paper away and the button's gonna be sticky. And then once you get that peeled off, and that too can be a little bit challenging with acrylic nails, you know. I like to peel a little bit of the excess tape off. And now that button's going to stick in place while I stitch it on. And we just repeat this process for the three buttons that I selected. The buttonhole selection stitch is in the buttonhole section and it's number 60. And you can see it right there. Um, you may wanna drop your feed dogs so that it doesn't advance the fabric through and then always use the hand cradle or the hand wheel or the flywheel 
to move your needle down manually to make sure you're not going to break your button. And then once I'm sure that everything is clear and how it should be, I complete two cycles. And then once it's done, I'm gonna lift my foot and I'm gonna move on to that other side, prep my button, you know the drill, peel off the little sticky bits and get it into position. And then sometimes when I wanna really see how to get that button on, I'll turn my hand wheel to get my needle to hold one of the eyes into position and then hand rocking that hand wheel and now I can easily finish this button. And then I'll just sew the other one on the opposite side and my holster for my Shadlin will be complete. Oh, and I knew some of you would catch this, but when I grabbed my button sew on foot out of the drawer, the little rubber grippy was on upside down. So let's fix this. <laughs> Ugh, I just dropped all these pins on the floor. Don't worry. I've got you, Linda, with my new tool belt. I have a magnet. All right, so now I have room for scissors. I have my little multi-function tool that can go in here. You know, I wanted to make this a pin cushion, but you know, it might hurt. <laughs> and then I've got my machine oil here, got my pins, I've got like these little guys here. Can't go without my expert point and press tool, some tweezers, a seam ripper just in case, you know, and then another kind of little pen here my cave thing, you saw me use that, and then, you know, can't be without the meds for too long, so here we go. All right, so if you enjoyed this tutorial and you would like to see other tutorials that involve medication or sharp pointy things or totally normal things, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville, and there you can like, comment, and subscribe. You can also hop on over to BerninaFNaperville.com and sign up for our Fat Quarter Club. It is a subscription, but guess what? We don't yank that money out of your checking account every month. We just send you an invoice. And if you don't like the project, you have to pay the invoice and we won't send you anything. That sounds like a great deal. <laughs> All right. Well, now you won't be losing things. I won't be losing things, but I feel like a, you know, maybe I'm 10 pounds heavier now. <laughs> See ya.